welcome back to my channel it is thursday and we are back with another video of course it's not just an ordinary video we haven't done sit down videos in a while so today we've got a special guest and um, if it's the first time here welcome my name is Melu Musibi and on this channel we'll talk about anything and everything that I feel comfortable sharing so today is one of those days where I have a guest and we're going to be talking all things business I have my special guest Mr. Pumlani Mbata and he will be sharing with us everything that we want to know about business. He is our wellness consultant, a businessman under his company. He is also an author of a book that is selling like hotcakes, Ubutule the business. He's going to tell us what is Ubutule the business, but he's going to be talking about all things business related. I'm going to let him introduce himself because I might just omit other things because he does a lot of things. So welcome, Mr. Kumlani Babu Mata. Please do introduce yourself. Um, okay, Sebo Mapu, thank you so much. Uh, greetings to everyone. Everyone who's watching, um, uh, greetings to you and thank you for tuning in. Um, today I'm here on the hot seat <laughs> <laughs> uh, to talk about, uh, especially talk about business today. Um, so as a it has been said I do um, a variety of things, uh, but today we decided to talk about business. Uh, I'm a wellness consultant. Um, I'm also uh, in business as an entrepreneur. Um, I'm also a pastor, by the way. Um, Thank so, you, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but today I'm, I'm very passionate about business, so that is why today we're talking about business, mm -hmm. and especially to those who are new in business or who want to start a business, or maybe you started, but uh, you know, you having challenges here and there. So we want to talk about that and also uh, introduce my book as well in terms of uh, what is in there and uh, why you should buy the book. By the way, if you have a first time, remember to subscribe. Don't leave without subscribing. Um, if you want to start a business or you're interested in just owning your business or you already have a business and you'd like to know how to go about it, maybe you're struggling in any area, please stay tuned. I'm sure you're going to learn a lot from this video. Um, so yeah, if you haven't subscribed, just do that now. <laughs> so Mr. Pumlani, I think what we're going to do, we just need to introduce you. Let us know for you, when did this whole business love start? Were you always in business? I doubt. <laughs> where, did you, where did this love start and how did you go about it? Who's the boom boom team? You have a business. Because most of the time, we think starting a business is like you, and all that. So tell us about your journey from the beginning and how you started and how you managed to find your way in the way. <laughs> a good question because it takes me back uh, to uh, my background, my family. Um, I've come from a family, a family of hustlers, if I can put it like that. Uh, my parents were not business people, but they were hustlers because they do a lot of things. And um, all our parents like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. they were trying to make ends meet. Mm. Uh, as much as my father was working, but uh, he would also do some side hustles as well. Mm. And then at some point, he was selling cattle, um, you know, and uh, at some point, he had a butchery. Um, my mother used to sell pots, and uh, at some point he was selling um, knitted jerseys and, and stuff like that. So he had a machine where he was knitting jerseys and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So um, it, they've always done that and, uh, you know, encouraged us. Uh, as much as, as a child, uh, you know, uh, I remember when my mother was selling pots, like we'd wake up so early in the morning because uh, she had to catch a taxi so she can go sell. Um, you know, waking up in the morning was really, some that we <laughs> so, but we had to because they were to wake up and carry the pots and take it to the taxis, you know. Uh, but uh, you know, it, 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 it at that time it was really getting into um, uh, you know our blood and uh, in, in our blood uh, system. So um, as we grew up, then uh, the love for business started growing as well, um, you know. So we uh, grew up knowing that uh, you can always uh, work and also do business on the other side. Um, when I finished my degree, um, I, uh, I, I got a job um, and I started working. Uh, but when I was working, I tried so much to start a business. And I failed a lot of times. Uh, I registered a business. I think even now, I still have businesses. I think I'm going to sell those businesses. And make money. <laughs> I registered them and they never took off, you know. Um, but I had a passion because right there, uh, I remember we even do um, some business plans and stuff like that. But 
it never took off. Mm. I guess it wasn't time. So there's always time for everything, right? Mm, true. Yeah. So um, then as time went on, um, uh, I got married and, and, and everything else in fact. Um, but, uh, you know, I had to share this vision with my wife that, you know, at some point I really want to uh, get into business and, and, and do some business. Um, then as time went on, we started, you know, uh, doing business and, uh, uh, you know, uh, one of the uh, businesses that I want to talk about, which we ventured into, uh, was a bedding business, uh, whereby we're selling bedding stuff, like your mm-hmm. carpeters, your, your sheets, your, you know, um, everything that is to do with uh, bedding. Um, and that was a great business, mm-hmm. you know. Um, we started selling from the food. Mm-hmm. Uh, at some point, we invested a lot of money to, uh, to open a shop. Um, and, uh, you know, as time went on, uh, it didn't work as well. The mm. shop was closed down. And we invested a lot of money there, but uh, we lost all that money, unfortunately. More than, it was more than 50,000. Sure. And we lost all that money. Um, so it was really bad. We got so discouraged uh, because we thought maybe it's not our thing. We need to focus on other things. Mm. Right. Um, but uh, there was a point where I decided, you know what, I'm going to revive this business because I need money. Mm. You know, uh, because at some point, uh, you know, I went to work in the South Coast, and uh, at some point I lost my job. Um, so I was unemployed for about two years. Mm-hmm. Now I was working as a teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at that point I didn't have money, so I thought, let me revive this business, and uh, we, we'll take it from there. I'll see what happens. Um, so I didn't have money to buy stock, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is one of the things I'm going to talk about, mm-hmm. uh, to say, do you need money to start a business? Mm-hmm. Or not? So I didn't have money to buy stock. So a lot of people don't know this. Um, uh, but uh, because I was so active on social media, especially Facebook, uh, as I still am. Um, then I, I, I took the old pictures um, the, of the painting that we're selling, the old pictures, and uh, I posted them on social media. Oh. And I said, guys, I'm selling painting stuff. I'm selling comforters and, 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 and you know, uh, everything that you need uh, for your bed. And uh, people get it, got interested and they said, oh, I want this stuff, I want this stuff. And I said, no, it's fine. Um, uh, this is the, the price. Mm. So uh, please put in a deposit so I can be sure that you didn't want the stuff. Oh, clever. So really, no, <laughs> you, have, you didn't have stock. <laughs> so basically, I didn't have stock. So sure. I didn't have money to go stock, uh, uh, stock the material. So, um, and then people would trust me because, I don't know, for some reason, uh, mm. uh, a lot of people trust me so much. So they actually give you money. Uh, so if I interest that if I know you, I think I'll you you would be rich. <laughs> <laughs> Just to check, sorry, I'm no. um, I'm hearing you talk about how oh. you started a business with Ama Comfort. You know, yes. most of the time when we're thinking of starting a business, and this is, I think I've also been had the same thought. Uguti, when you start a business, you must have a business and cool like a printing company um most people look down on starting on things like comforters you know selling it's like that's not a proper business how important is it to start with anything you know because no business is better than other i feel like you just need to be passionate about whatever you start i don't know if you can just take us through that one because a lot of times people have good ideas but because it's not the business that we deem as a good business that could be successful people t- tend to leave it but yeah. um, look it's a uh, there are different ways in which you can start a business or you can get uh, uh, you know uh, motivated by different things mm. firstly uh, it could be passion that mm. you're just passionate about something mm. second you can look at the demand you know even if you don't like something but if there's a demand for it mm. you can actually go for it mm. successful so what we did is we looked at the demand um as a man you know i, I don't really think i'm interested in but we looked at the demand that people are changing um, you know Bedding stuff at the time, you know, we had to, you know, uh, put a different comforter, you have to change the sheet, you have to mm. change the pillowcases and stuff. So I said, no, maybe this is, uh, you know, the demand is there. Mm. So that is how we started. Mm. Um, you know, so my wife was even sell uh, at the school. It worked. Mm. So, um, and it, it was really good. It was, we, we actually made a lot of money while we were selling from the boot mm, than, than when you had a shop. shop. <laughs> <laughs> because with a shop, you pay, pay the rent you know, and, and stuff. And, and, and stuff. Yeah. So mm. we actually made a lot of money because we didn't have a shop, so we were selling from the boot. 
good and um, it was a good business. Mm. It really motivated us to go further and uh, you know to uh, start other businesses. Mm. But as time went on, um, I was unemployed for two years, as I said. So mm. this what I was busy doing. Mm. Uh, then I got a job. Okay. I got a job and because as a man, you know, I have a wife and kids, so mm. I had to get my job so that I can make a stable income. Um, so when I got a job, really, I didn't have enough time to continue doing that business, so I had to stop it mm. and focus on my new job and develop myself there. Right. Uh, so to get to where I am today, mm. um, I had to do something the gist. very drastic. <laughs> the gist. <laughs> That's the gist of this to, mm. to get to where I am today, I had to do something very drastic. Mm. Right? Uh, firstly, I, I, my, my passion is uh, uh, wellness, mm. especially psychological wellness, emotional wellness, and then wellness in general. Mm. Uh, so I was working for this company uh, where I got a job, and um, it's, a, it's a wellness company it deals with EAP, like employee wellness uh, oh, okay. uh, business. Uh, so it's quite a big company. Um, so I went there from 2004, um, sorry, from 2014. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I went there, and as time went on, I realized I'm a business. It's not you. Eight to four is not doing for me anymore. Mm. Uh, you know, so uh, in 2018, uh, I turned my resignation. Mm. Said, look, I'm gonna resign. Um, so we spoke with my wife, and we came to a decision that I, you know, I'm gonna resign. But this is what I wanted. So she gave me support. So yeah, so I turned my resignation. Uh, I resigned, uh, but after I resigned, uh, the same company mm-hmm. said uh, they want to be my first husband. Oh, you know, that, that's my, nice. <laughs> you know, and it, it was amazing uh, because I always believe that there are no coincidences. Mm. Uh, God actually prepares uh, things for you, which is why it's important as an entrepreneur that mm. you, must, you must have faith, you must believe, you must, uh, you know, uh, trust God. Mm. So then I resigned. So the company said they're going to become your client. I said, oh, well, that's great. Um, so they were my first client. Um, and then, because I also do life coaching. Mm. So, um, uh, especially when it comes to uh, also the matter counseling, mm-hmm. counseling. And I started advertising myself because, uh, you know, I needed to increase my client base. Yes. So I started advertising myself, telling people that I'm a marriage counselor, you know, if they have problems in their marriages and their relationships. Has come to me, uh, you know, I'm going to assist them. Um, and remember, I didn't have an office. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, <laughs> I'm just trying to show you that you don't, you need, don't to need, yes, start with what you what have. You have. Uh, Great. Um, I, it was embarrassing that, uh, you know, when people wanted to come for counseling sessions, uh, I, I had to see them in the restaurant. Mm. Uh, you know, um, for me, well, at least you were still fancy <laughs> restaurants, <laughs> yeah. So, we go to a restaurant, especially hotel, because mm. hotels and restaurants usually during the day, yes, uh, you know, a bit quiet. Yeah. So, yeah, we go there, but I would have in the sessions as well. So, we go there and we sit and uh, talk, uh, even if the person was feeling uncomfortable because it's an open space, uh, but I would try and trick them into getting comfortable. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, so it, it, it worked because. Uh, uh, I started getting a lot of people mm. coming in for uh, for for, for natural counseling and uh, premature counseling sessions. Um, so yeah, so that is how they actually started. Wow. You know, uh, and then I developed from the um, that's a business that uh, never let me down. Mm. Not like the others. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, people say when you need to start a business, you must have big finance. I think that's the biggest issue that people talk about. Guti, I can't start. I, I have this idea, but I don't have money. How important is it uh, in Dubai funding? Because that's most of the time the problem why people can't start. I mean, there's a lot of people with ideas and they haven't come to fruition because of finances mainly. So how would you advise us on those? Um, look, I'm not going to lie. Starting a business needs money. Mm. Uh, but you've got to be creative about it. Mm. You know, uh, mm. uh, like I'm saying that uh, when I started, when I restarted the wedding business, I didn't have uh, money to buy stock. Mm. Uh, so I had to advertise the product mm. that didn't exist. Exactly. Oh, oh my word. <laughs> <laughs> and, and people trusted me now mm. to be able to, you know, um, uh, to pay a deposit so that I can deliver and then they pay the mm. amount. So, um, when I talk about business uh, uh, to anyone, I usually say, if you're waiting for finance or if you're waiting for 
um, funding, you're never going to start. You're never going to start. So start with what you have, mm. wherever that you are. Sure. You can even start with something that you don't like, mm. so that you can raise money to get to where you to want. To get to where you, you, you want to go to. Mm. Uh, but of course, businesses are not the same. Mm. Uh, so if you've got a big business idea that you want to start, I say um, if you can't start that big business, start small. Start small. Start small. Do something mm. small. Because remember that in business, you also have to create reputation. Mm. You have to create experience. Mm. So if you actually started a business five years ago, and you can't start, you couldn't start because you, you, you're waiting for funding. So it means that all your five years is wasted. Mm. Anyone who wants to give you money, they'll ask you, what have you done, what have you done in the past? Nothing. So you have zero experience mm. in business, but you want to start a business. Sure. So no one's going to give you money, I can promise you. Mm. Banks won't give you money. Mm. Because banks are in business. If they give you money to, if they fund you, it's because they're going to get something. So they can't fund something that they can see that it's going to, to you know, it's going to pay. Mm. So you've got to be very careful if you're going to wait for funding because it, it's going to take you time. Mm. So while you're waiting for funding, do yeah, something. Do something. You know, get experience. Pay. Mm. You know, as, as you continue, anyone wants to give you money, they will look at what you've done. Mm. Even if what you want to do now is different from what you've been doing. Mm. It's fine. At least you have, you've got experience. Mm. So the bottom line is, don't wait for funding. Start with what you have wherever you are. Even if you don't have an office, don't wait for an office. Oh, yes. you know, start with wherever that you are. Do something that you can do with what you have. Sure. There's a lot of struggles that business people talk about, you know. Good business are lula, it's challenging. What are those some of the challenges that you've gone through, some of the challenges that you can talk about uh, that you went through in starting and going on your business? Maybe to help someone who wants to start, maybe to help someone who's already started and they've got a lot of struggles, they're even thinking of giving up. Okay. Look, going to business is not easy, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, we make it look fancy when you talk about it. True. <laughs> so uh, it makes everyone to think that it's you know it's it's, it's good, it's easy. Um, even resigning from a from a day job, I'll say don't do it if you don't feel like it or mm-hmm. if you don't have the energy to do it. So um, basically, there are a lot of challenges, especially in South Africa. So the the money is the biggest challenge when it comes to business. So if you don't have funding, uh, you know you've got to every day make sure that uh, you know each and every cent that you get you invest it back into the business mm. so uh, when you have a business and uh, you, you make it no matter how much money you're making you have to make sure that you invest it back in the business because you don't have funding you don't have anyone who's going to give you money if you come from a family that cannot give you money to start a business it means that every cent that you make in the business that cent has to be invested back into the business mm. and of course you can take a little profit for yourself but it becomes difficult and secondly, uh, it also helps when you have uh, support. Mm-hmm. You know, um, some of the things that I've done in business, I wouldn't have done them if I was single. Because um, you know, uh, once we we take money and invest it into the business, then maybe you have a hundred thousand mm-hmm. rand, and uh, you come from a family that cannot support you. You are single, you are not married, um, and and you take a hundred thousand rand put it into your business. So business goes to it. Mm. It either goes up or down. Age. <laughs> so, we've got to be careful. It's a so, risk. Yeah, it's a, it's a risk, you must know. So, mm. if you take 100,000 rand, right, put it to your business, that is your last money, because you're hoping that it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, then it becomes a problem. Mm. So, um, you know, all your money is gone, and, uh, you know, everything that you ever owned uh, will actually perish, because, you know, your, your, your business has failed. Mm. So, uh, support system is very important. So, um, uh, as, as a married person, um, my wife had to buy into the, uh, the idea and to the vision. Um, so then, uh, because we, we, we have two incomes, um, so we have to make sure that, uh, well, if I go into business, it means that we want to lose this income mm. that I had, but her income is going to assist in terms of supporting the family. Now that we've spoken about everything relating to how to start, what do you need to start, um, um, things like the benefit, well, the struggles of having a business. Can we talk about the nice things now about having the business, the benefits of starting your own uh, company um, besides the struggles when it flourishes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we need to Okay. I'll talk about it and talk about where I am right now. Look, there are lots of benefits in starting a business. 
number one, you know, having an income that you have worked for, you know, with your with your blood and sweat. Mm. It's so sweet. Mm. It's so sweet, you know, because you've got money that you know that you have worked very hard for it. Mm. And uh, when, when when you you show that money, mm. sure, it, it's so nice because <laughs> it, it, it's your sweat. And, mm. and, and uh, not that when you are employed, it's not your sweat, mm. but it's different. Mm. The salary is different from money that you make from the business. Thanks. It, it's different. You only know when you're in the business. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, so that on its own, having, uh, you know, something that you're developing, uh, it's another benefit because a business is like a baby. Mm. Uh, you know, you have to uh, make it, help it grow all the time, mm. and feed it, you know, and, and, and take your business step by step. So, you know, those weekly victories that you have in business, mm. they help create you a lot. Mm. It also boosts your self-esteem as well, especially mm. if you're doing well. Mm. Boosts your self-esteem. Um, uh, also, if you're not doing well, you've got to encourage yourself when you start to boost your self-esteem just because your business didn't do well. Mm. You've got to encourage yourself because uh, you can still, uh, you know, move on. The challenges in business, you know, when you conquer those challenges, it, it helps to give you experience mm. in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the business and also in terms of how you challenges. Mm. Uh, I usually say that uh, business is life and life is business. Mm. So, which means that the lessons that you learn in business, you can apply them in real life as well. Mm. Because that is where, you know, you learn that also in life, you don't just give up, but you keep trying. Mm. You know, so in other areas of your life, you can keep applying the same thing. Mm. Uh, and of course, the benefits of uh, um, not having a boss. Mm. <laughs> it's so sweet. It's so nice, guys. <laughs> you know, you're not waking up in the morning, you don't have to report to anyone. Mm. If you have to take leave, you don't have to, you apply, have to apply. apply. You don't have to apply to yourself. <laughs> So if you feel like not waking up, and, and, and of course there are times like that where mm. you feel like no, guys, I just, just, just mm. rest. Let me take a day off, and you don't have to answer to anyone. You take a day off, and uh, the following day you wake up and you go on and you hustle again. Mm. So the benefits of being your own boss are, are, are very big, mm. um, and also you get to um, you know have time to actually do a lot of things. For instance, you can decide uh, anytime if your child has got sport in school. You can decide, no, today I'm going to attend mm. uh, the, the, the school sports and support my son or support my daughter. Yes. You know, uh, so you don't, you, you've got, you are in charge of your time. Mm. Uh, because time is very, very important. So if you are fully employed, like working eight to four every day, you, you're not in control of your time. Mm. So being in business gives you control over time. Mm. So time doesn't control you, but you control, you control time. time. In the sense that, uh, you know, you, if I want to have three meetings one day, I can actually do that. Mm. If I want to cancel all meetings, they can, can still do that. Focus on what you want to focus on. Um, so those are the benefits. And also that you, uh, when you're employed, I'll always make this comparison because it's important. <laughs> mm-hmm. When you're employed, uh, say you earn 30000 on a month, mm-hmm. look, you'll always earn the 30000 a month, no matter how hard you work. Mm. You can uh, have sleepless nights, work yes. through the night, work <laughs> hard, too much in meetings, you know, and make a lot of money for your employer. Mm. But month and come month and you will get the same. You pay two thousand. Right. But in business, it's so sweet because you know if you work, if you, you had more clients for that month, it means more money. For mm. you. The more you work, the, the more, more you get. Basically, the more clients you get, the more you get paid. If you get more clients for your employer, your employer may make you an incentive, but. It's, it's, not not the the it's not the same. So, yeah, so the, the, the more you work, the more clients you get, the more you get paid. So I think that's that's one of the uh, nice uh, benefits. So then as a, as a business grows, uh, you can even come to a point where you employ people to make to work. To work. So it takes time to get there. To get there. Uh, okay. If you want to get, uh, uh, if you want to be like uh, your uh, Richard Bassett, Bassett, you know, <laughs> And while people you work, work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so basically, in short, that's how it works. Okay. 
So like we said, Ubuti, you are an author of a book called Ubukulebe Business. Please tell us what is Ubukulebe Business. <laughs> I was asking my husband, Ubuti, what is Ubukule? <laughs> so you can um, just maybe take us through the book. What is it about? What inspired the book? What can one get if they buy the book? So um, yeah, just tell us about the book. Okay. Um... <laughs> I'm an author, guys. I'm, I'm an author. Like, I'm in the sound of this. So, H. H. I'm an author. First time author. Uh, so, uh, it's a, for me, it's a great experience. Yeah. I've always wanted to write a book, but, uh, you know, I guess it was time. Mm. Uh, so, the right time finally came. H. And I wrote a book. And surprisingly, a lot of people actually have told me to write a book because they see the things I say about marriage and relationships. Mm. Normally, you yeah, just write a book. Like this. Uh, so, um, uh, so I ended up writing a book, but wow. I wrote a book about something very different, something that was not expected for me to write about. Mm. I wrote a book about business. Ubukule business. It's a book that is out there. Guys, this book has sold like hotcakes. It's everywhere in the country. Can we see um, the book? Go to, um, go to Port Elizabeth. Go to wow. Uh, go to Jobe. Go to different parts of KZN. Wow. The book is there. Um, uh, uh, it is going up. I'm even receiving orders from overseas. Wow. Like, order from USA. Um, and, and from Pakistan. Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> and new order from Pakistan, you know. So it's not international. You could have a Zulu book. It's not international. Imagine. You know, something never happened. Right. So but this is a business book. Uh, business, you see, loosely translated means the art of doing business. Mm. So it actually teaches you how to do a business. Mm. So this book is good for people who are who want to go into business, mm -hmm. even if you're not in business yet, but mm -hmm. you just want to get information mm -hmm. about business. It's also good for people who are starting businesses, but they don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. It's also good for people who are already started, but they want to grow, they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's, you know, it's a mixture of a, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So I'll also talk about some of the very interesting topics. In this mm -hmm. um, why in Zulu? I, 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 yes. I hear you ask. The yes, question. that was the burning question. question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why would you write a book in this situation? Mm. You live in a global village. Uh, exactly. Uh, so, write it in English so that everyone can uh, can get the information. Look, I, I, I've read a lot of books, uh, a lot of English books. Mm. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki is your book, a lot of books. Mm. Uh, but all the books I've read, I've, I've read uh, about business, they're written in English. Uh. And I said, look, we have a challenge in South Africa. Businesses fail within three years. Mm. Why is that? Um, so one of the main reasons for me is lack of knowledge. Mm. People don't have knowledge. Mm. Um, uh, uh, and also one of the barriers is the language. Mm. So if someone who has got only metric or someone who dropped off school or someone who doesn't understand English or cannot read English, uh, it doesn't they shouldn't be in business. Mm. So if they are in business, how do they get knowledge? Knowledge. About the business. Uh. So um, I thought of someone who's uh Umama who or oh, okay, someone which, uh, Eric. Mm. Uh, who say Eric for ten years. Mm. Uh when it's like one and the same thing, Jal, every time. So maybe others are just a lot closer than business life. Mm. Others are in English like that. So this book is mainly for those people. Abana was surprisingly enough. If this was it, so this is general. And I appreciate that because it means that one they support me, yes. and secondly they also uh, you know want to get information. So um, I usually say Maumzu in South Africa was the English. This is with a Englishman because you understand both languages. Yes. So yeah. So people. Uh, have been buying the book, um, so uh, but it's mainly for people who don't understand English language because they can be able to read about business, business in their own. In their own. Sure, um, you that's know, special. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, we've got a lot of books who are non-fiction books. Mm. I love non-fiction books, but for me, I'm afraid to say I'm jealous. I'm happy this is going international. <laughs> so if one of us is talking about the end of this season, I'm going to jail. First of its kind. Me, like, up to now, I still claim this, this is, is the first book. I've also never heard of a business time. book, Jay. <laughs> yes, Zul. Never. Zool. Mm. This is the first. 
and uh, so basically I've made history. Yes, <laughs> breaking <laughs> records. Breaking <laughs> records. <laughs> and yeah, so it's a beautiful book. Uh, let me just tell you what what in this. Book. Yes. Let's talk about some of the topics that are here. Mm. Um, for instance, we we encourage people to go get education. Yes. Um, so it's got uh, sixteen topics. Okay. Sixteen topics, and uh, these topics are very very interesting. That yeah. the first one talks about education. What's the importance of education if you go into business? Mm. Or what's the importance of education in general? About being in school, you get to I mean, I'm gonna to go to school, go to school. Yes. Uh, then this book tells you that you go to school, you get to learn talent and pushing to go. Sure. So number two, you have to get education. Number two, you have to get education. Get education. What is the importance of education? Mm. Uh, it also talks about who tell you when you go to the politics. Because we got political education. Uh, sorry, we got political freedom. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. But did you get financial freedom? Yes. Economic freedom. Hey, let's start to get in. Get in full now. Yes. Yes. I'm uh, pick up and out. Let's start to. Is very close to me as well because since it's getting so COVID, it's not only COVID. There are a lot of people who are living in savings, um, but it is in savings. They never have any income, and a lot of people lost businesses. Mm. Uh, so, uh, this the third topic here talks about who made an account journey of the release of savings. Mm. It's so, been so ma- much retrenchment. Yeah. So, ma, no more to the old retrenchment of savings. They need they need to get this book. Mm. Because this book talks about what the ma retrenchment of savings. Mm. Uh, how to make sure that you safeguard that money. But from that, I'm saying, "Zeni, but only money. Come get money. I'm not going to let 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 um, uh, like okay, business is man. That is topic number six. We can learn journey business, so it takes you step by step over to where's the journey. Um, so it also uh, topic number eleven. Oh, balance of business. Mm. Uh, registration. Business? Uh, how do you register a business? What is the importance of registering a business? Mm. What are the benefits of registering a business? Because a lot of people say I'm going to register a business very early in age. Mm. No, it's important to register a business. Mm. So the like, matters of cousin and other. Let's say for today. Uh, Ikuluma, uh, Kona Yaga, a very interesting one. Uh, Uti, uh, 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 Ugnigas, a little kitchen's off of his village. Number fourteen. Never collected an element. Mama collected it. Give me the offer of collected an element, my work, my collected business, so that you don't lose money. Mm. Um, yeah. And the last one, uh, one but last, uh, number fifteen, mm. talks about who hold a business. As imagine talking about business leadership in Sizu. Mm. Basically, talk about business leadership, which is a very interesting topic because everywhere we are now talking about business leadership. Mm-hmm. So here, Sizu Fundi, uh, uh, you know, we, we teach you business leadership in your own vernacular. how to provide proper leadership in your business. So this book basically has got everything, even mm. marketing, equal. Mm. Uh, 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 anything you want to know about business, economy. So I've used my own experience. I've used information, knowledge, and it only the kind of food demand in the internet in the bank. Uh, so then I, I ended up with this book. Great. But one thing that I want to emphasize also is that I'm not a financial advisor. So mm. anything we told that, please make sure you verify it with your financial advisor. But what I'm sharing here is experiences that I've had, knowledge that I have. I'm just sharing knowledge that uh, uh, you know have gained uh, through the years when doing business. Yeah, so guys, this is Zulu pen. Are you going to see this? But they've been asking. Oh, so it's a Zulu version. Are you going to see this? For now, this is Zulu, guys. So, um, in terms of people who are fully supporting the tour, you know, from people who have been buying this book, I've got a funny story to tell about the book. A friend of mine is on what they are, what they are about the opportunity. He can't get a job in the bank as well. Guys, I didn't have money to print this book. Sure. So I thank each and every one of you because, especially about about taking the job in the bank, 
Because I use the money, the money to, to print. print. I didn't have money. To print. You're so that's creative. what I'm saying. Be creative when you're in business. Mm. This is what I did. Very interesting. Pre-orders. Um, pre-orders. <laughs> I, I typed the book. I type and I type them. Um, then I got a publisher. I got quotations. Go see how much it's going to be to print it out. Mm. I to write. I started doing calculations. Then I told her a graphic designer. I said, man, please do graphics for me for this book, for the hub. Mm. Um, he said, okay, so do you need a mock book? What is a mock book? A mock book is the picture on the internet where you can actually have in your final analysis what, oh. which is not the actual book, but a mock book. So in other words, in the cover engine, it's Tom is the cover engine, mm. yeah, it's but it's not the actual book. Okay. So he did that for me, and uh, I said, I want to use that to market the book. Oh. Then I started marketing the book, but guys... I was with Tega in my demand in other pool. I was with Tega in 95. This is who is the book. So make sure you place the book. Uh, you place your order and pay the full amount, which is 95. Mm. Before you put it in. Yes, what happened? I was receiving money every day. Sure. <laughs> mm. People mm. pay for the book. And get it. And get it. But people will pay. Sure. I'll tell you the secret to that, which is, I think. Uh, no more arrivals, but I think it's one topic that is very important that mm. I want to talk about mm. before we close. Guys, the reason why people were able to pay for the book in Gekko mm. um, uh, and answers we pay them is because of the reputation. Mm. Two things that are very important for me in business number one, time, mm. number two, reputation. Mm. Look, if people don't trust you, I talk about it in the book as well. If people don't trust you, they're not going to buy from you. Mm-hmm.